Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this short five episode series, I'm going to show you how you can quickly get set up to efficiently author Skyrim mods. We're going to quickly get you set up with mod managers. We're going to get you set up with the Skyrim creation kit. We're going to get you set up with a text code editor for Skyrim scripts, as well as a debugger and viewer for the logs, and then just a variety, a whole smorgasbord of different tools and utilities that you will need as a mod author. Now, if you'd like to go a little bit more slowly and in depth, you can check out my screencast playlist, Intro to Skyrim Mod Authoring. That's a 12 episode series where some of those episodes are like an hour, hour and a half long, where we really go into depth and take our time and learn things as we go along. I'm going to be glossing over lots of things in this short screencast series. I'm going to be pausing a lot. Um, and uh, we're, we're not even going to make a mod until the text editing episode. And even then, we're going to make a short Hello World mod. So don't mind me as I uh, hop on over to the desktop where I have my little cheat sheet here. And uh, I'm going to install Skyrim. I'm just going to show you the, uh, uh, the best way to install Steam for Skyrim so that it doesn't blow up when you try and install the creation kit. Now here we are, I'm installing Steam for the first time. Now this is optional but recommended, especially if you have an opportunity to kind of reconfigure your Steam setup. Uh, one of the things we are going to do is we are not going to install Steam into program files. Put it anywhere else. I'm going to put mine into C Steam. Um, when we run the creation kit later, I personally had a number of issues when I ran the creation kit fixes, which you are going to want and need when I had my Skyrim installed into C program files. So now let me go ahead and download and install Skyrim, and I'll show you how we're going to run it throughout this series. One minor thing, you're probably going to want to have Steam remember your password, because every time you reboot, you're going to be running uh, Skyrim, you're going to run it a lot when you start authoring mods. And again, uh, when you do install Skyrim, so I'm going to download it for the first time here, I'm on a freshly reformatted PC for this short five episode series, so I install everything with y'all. Um, install it under the C drive uh, when I was using the VS Code based uh, Papyrus debugger for Skyrim scripts. Uh, I ran into some issues when I had Skyrim installed on any drive other than C. So don't put it on your external other drive, uh, put it onto your C drive. And here I am, I'm going to play Skyrim for the first time. Uh, the screen might go black, it's going to install DirectX. This is something you need to let Steam uh, do for Skyrim, and it needs to happen before you try running the creation kit for the first time. So if you're on a new PC, once you try and install the creation kit, make sure that you've run Skyrim at least once. And we're good to go. Um, that is finished up. I'm just going to show you how we're going to be running Skyrim throughout this series, um, although we're not going to run it a whole bunch. Uh, once you've got it installed, you probably want to go to your options, and as a Skyrim mod author, you're going to want to run Skyrim in a window uh, with a border so that you can move it around, and at a resolution smaller than your main screen. And you can set it to whatever you want for, for that. Let's just make sure it runs. I'll probably go bum, bum, bum. Now you can turn off that intro music uh, using a setting in the Skyrim INI settings. Uh, we will touch on that in our fifth episode when we go over various tools. When we look at Beth INI, which is a popular tool for configuring your Skyrim INI file with different settings. Uh, when you start writing a ton of mods, it is super useful to turn off that music because you're going to be running Skyrim uh, maybe uh, maybe once a minute or something when you're writing code. So that's it for this episode. Uh, I'm going to close things out and uh, stop recording and then head right into our mod managers episode. Now even if you have a mod manager that is your favorite, uh, if you are only using Vortex or Mod Organizer 2, if you're not using both of those and you don't have them set up to integrate together, you should head on over to that Mod Organizer and uh, Vortex episode, which is next. Thank you, and I'll see you in just a moment.